With the inevitable release of Chapter 4, Mob Entertainment has decided to tease us with some information. The images released for the Playtime Orientation book have some secret clues that you probably missed. These clues not only provide hints about the behind the scenes of Playtime, but also hint at some future enemies we might encounter. In one of the pages of the handbook, we get a mention of a new place called the Feeding Pit. According to the book, this is a special place where feral toys live. I should make a note about the feeding pit. It's a section of abandoned sewer systems with all these unused pipes in the walls. This is where the Wuggies live, as in feral mini Huggies. The note left behind by an ex-employee also describes it as nearly impossible to escape from. There's no way to get out of the feeding pit by yourself, so you can only hope people like you enough to pull you out if you happen to fall in. Now the feeding pit looks very similar to the Wacko Wuggy game in the game station. The numerous pipes likely hold tens of hundreds of evil mini Huggies. There's a very high chance that we might see this area in the main game in Chapter 4. Since this location is Huggy Wuggy specific, I can't think of a better way to run into our old nemesis. We ended Chapter 3 with the main character descending down an elevator. This means that the chances of us landing into the feeding pit is extremely high. But it's not just Huggy who might make an appearance, as smiling critters like Dog Day, Crafty, and Kickin were also mentioned. On page 17 of the Playtime Handbook, we can see an image of Dog Day watching Crafty chase Kickin Chicken. Now for those who watched my previous video, you probably understand the significance of this photo. There's a reason Mob Entertainment decided to show Crafty chasing Kickin, and it's all explained in this video. The photo has the text, take every step like it's your last. This is pretty ironic considering the fact that all three of these toys have met their end. Dog Day is a special case though, but being possessed is probably even worse than being dead. The critters are running in the direction of Playcare according to the sign, which we all know is basically a death sentence for any orphan. At the bottom left, we can see a suspicious warning that states, serious injury or death may occur while standing near heated equipment please proceed through this area with extreme caution. If it wasn't already obvious that something was wrong with this toy factory, then this confirms it. It is not normal for people to randomly die while inside of an orphanage. An orphanage should be a safe place where children don't have to worry about dangerous machines. It's hard to imagine anyone willingly accepting a job here after seeing this guide. But if you thought that was creepy, wait until you learn about the head of Playcare. Stella Graper is one of the founding members right alongside Elliot Ludwig. She's been hinted at multiple times and has even been theorized to be Poppy's mother. Stella is the real heart of this company. She might just have the greatest job in the world. Between her roles at Playcare and the Game Station, she's in charge of helping our orphans play games and have the time of their lives. It's like never having to grow up. Please note that working in the Game Station requires you to be a responsible adult. We've actually heard Stella's voice before on the intercom during our time in Chapter 2. There's also an unused VHS tape that was supposed to be in Chapter 1, but didn't make the cut. Playing with toys when I was young was so magical. I could go straight from my bedroom floor to anywhere in the world. It was such a great feeling. We can hear the enthusiasm in Stella's voice, and if we didn't know any better, she sounds like a nice person. She understands why children love toys to begin with, but things take a dark turn as the video goes on. She hints at the Bigger Bodies initiative and believes that it is the only way to preserve human life. A note regarding this exact VHS tape was mentioned by the ex-employee. Stella is a very odd individual, like weird even by playtime standards. There's a tape somewhere of an internal interview she did where she talks about how you can't stay young forever and then compares people to trees. Apparently she's like that all the time. Now Stella might actually be the key to solving the mystery who is behind the prototype. She might also be the key to solving who is Poppy's real identity. The reason why Stella is often associated with Poppy is because both of these characters share the same voice actor. Now it could be possible that Mob Entertainment just wanted to save money by having the voice actor do both. Stella can't actually be Poppy herself, since we know Poppy was created in 1950, and Stella mentions the existence of Mommy Longlegs, who was created in 1991. However, there's still a chance that Poppy and Stella could share some family history. In Chapter 4, we can expect to see more lore surrounding Stella as well as more background on who Poppy actually is. And if you weren't convinced that Huggy Wuggy was going to be in Chapter 4, wait until you see this. On one of the pages of the Playtime Handbook, there's a page titled The Wuggy Range. Now this sounds like it could be another area dedicated to Huggy Wuggy. We know that he was Playtime's most successful mascot, so it makes sense that he gets his own dedicated area. Instead of many Huggies attacking us, this time we might actually see a completely new form. Huggy Wuggy, launched in 1984, was a huge hit with kids and has become our best known toy. He's the friendliest, furriest fellow you hope to meet, always sporting a smile. He doesn't talk much, 
He just likes to hug. Our market research showed that anxious kids respond well to a toy they can attach to themselves. So we designed him with Velcro pads on his hands. Once he hugs onto you, you can't lose him. And he can't lose you. A recent survey found that 87% of people, when asked what product they associate most with Playtime Co., named Huggy Wuggy. We believe that in the 1990s, Huggy Wuggy will only get bigger. We even get to see on the next page how the Velcro straps work on Huggy's hands. This might explain why Huggy's go-to method is to always grab his opponent before delivering a nasty bite. We can see on the side a checklist that Playtime employees were encouraged to keep an eye out for. Each Huggy design had to have a similar length for both its arms and legs. The eyes and mouth had to be a specific distance apart. And at the bottom left, we can even get a teaser about Huggy Wuggy's Bigger Bodies initiative form. Huggy was a big part of the Bigger Bodies initiative, literally. I made some notes about him that you can find later on. Now this note right here stands out amongst the other notes. We can see in the earlier pages that the yellow notes were signed by a person with the initials PW. From what we can gather about PW, they seem to be an employee with average insights into the real workings behind playtime. This red note, however, seems to hint that they know a lot more about what is really going on. And I'm starting to think that there might be a reason why some of these notes are a certain color. The notes vary from being yellow, blue, and red, and can signify that each one is written by a different person. When the official book releases in May, I'm sure we're gonna find out just what this red note is referring to. We know that PW is a biologist that was hired by Playtime, so it would make sense if PW did know about the Bigger Bodies initiative. However, I can also see Playtime keeping PW in the dark while they continue researching without knowing the full picture. It's possible that PW might have a bigger role in the story than we think. I wouldn't be surprised if the person known as PW was actually someone we know. Maybe someone like the main character. Let me know in the comments below on whether or not we'll see Huggy Wuggy back again in Chapter 4. This Playtime notebook might be the key to solving some of the biggest mysteries fans have for the series. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications because we'll be back with more videos like this. See you next time.